Uh, the, the, this part here coming up, I, I should uh, get ready for it because it's an action y part. I remember it. Uh, look, box. Uh, you know, we used to clean out eviction houses and find a ton of these kind of things. Uh, you'd find bicycles that they left behind. Now, uh, let me explain eviction houses. It's where either someone had been, you know, died or, or committed suicide or, or got kicked out of their house. Basically, a house that needed cleaned out after the person that lived there had uh, been kicked out or left or wasn't there anymore. And we'd, we'd go in these houses, and this was before the laws were so strict and the government got is strictly involved and said you have to throw everything away in the house. Uh, we used to find bicycles and, and stuffed animals, all kinds of toys and everything. We used to take bags and bags of toys to the, uh, the Children's Mercy Hospital and, and uh, uh, children's homes and stuff like that and orphanages and everything up in the city and, and give the bikes to kids that couldn't afford them and everything. So, uh, you know, we can't do that anymore, obviously, because everything has to be thrown away into a landfill. Wasteful, I know. It's just illogical and ignorant. Uh, but, uh, you know, that, that this bike reminds me of that. We got all kinds of bikes. Antique bikes, new bikes, all kinds. You, people, when people have to leave, they, they would leave behind stuff that... Uh, because they had to leave at a moment's notice sometimes when they were evicted. They, they thought they could make the payment, and they they didn't get to, and and you, when you run into those money problems, you never suspect it's going to happen to you a lot of times, so these people, you know, they left behind things dear to them, family pictures and portraits and everything, uh, <clears throat> and uh, the, oftentimes they left behind their kids' toys and bikes and everything, because that's not as important, sometimes they left clothes, they'd only be able to take a suitcase and stuff, so they left them behind a lot, it's really tragic to think about. Sometimes we contacted the people when we found addresses and stuff for the names, and we would uh, send them back their stuff. Uh, but a <clears> lot, <throat> you know, that's what happens when you know people get hardships. Uh, you know, when hardships come their way, it's sad, really. <clears throat> uh, these are awesome. I I, I once tied one of these uh, a crate like this to my bike. Actually, uh, I was working out that uh, this is like a, two years ago. I think it was. Uh, Every year the farmers farm their corn, but uh, since we we live near non-commercial farmer, you know we we live near farm uh, farmer like independent farmers like they're 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 good old boys, uh, <clears throat> not the big conglomerate types, and uh, they, they they every year they harvest their corn with combines, and uh, the reason I'm staying here I'll, I'll go I'll move on after a second, but uh, they they farm you know with combine and they leave corn behind on the ground. It doesn't get all the corn. So you have ears and ears and ears of corn setting in the fields, and you can actually ask these farmers, hey, can I go in there and pick up the corn and shuck it? And by shuck it, <laughs> the word shuck means you basically uh, knock the kernels off the cob. Uh, and then you can feed them to your animals. And I tied this on the front of my bar, uh, bike bar handles right there. Uh, handlebars. And, uh, bar handles. <laughs> handlebars. And uh, I f it would fill it with corn. I, you know, I was uh, I was running, and I decided to bike instead. And uh, every time I biked, I would uh, fill it with corn and bike back. So that was pretty cool. Free animal food and stuff. Oh, I remember these old heater things. Had those in, a, in our school, connected to a big boiler. Our school was very old. What's this? A boot? <laughs> uh, you can hear him. They're beating him up. I think they killed him. Oh, I thought you were a cop. He's one of us. Look at him down there. I told you they'd be coming for us next. Just this once, I hope you're wrong. There they are. Sounding the alarm. Yeah, you didn't receive a letter. This doesn't look good. They're definitely coming in here. Here goes the rest of the neighborhood. It was just a matter of time. I'm talking to them, by the way. You come up to them, press E. Was that you knocking? I didn't even know we still had a door. See, uh, he's drowning himself in booze. Some people turn to that when, uh, you know, they feel all hope is lost and they, they drown themselves in that stuff. Uh, you can see here they're living in squalor. They don't have a door here or whatever. Uh, you know, 
boarded up places and you know mattress on the floor center block uh, no way to you know they, they you know city 17 is safe all right you know so obviously they found someone that was uh, part of the resistance or something or someone they suspected as part of the resistance because now they're going through all the buildings or else they're doing it as a scare tactic a uh, fear uh, a way to make uh, people fear them so people don't step out of line I can't take it anymore Everything's gonna be okay. what are you going to do I think of something when is it all going to end don't worry please it's all right where is he Eight, Doctor Breen. You can see, you know, he's trying to condole, uh, you know, that he's kind of trying to console her. Uh, but really, what can he do? It, it, the only thing that's left for him is hope, and you know, he's trying to spread that kind of hope and saying, you know, things will be okay, things will work out, things are going to get better. But in these kinds of situations, what what can the people really do versus? Attention, resident. Oh, great. Miss Walking me off. Cooperation with your citizens See, they sense, you know, they found us. Oh, crap. Wow, they're taking people out. They, they, they found us, so that now all these people are, you know, they're, they're coming to look for these people and... Get in here, quick! Keep moving, head for the roof! Look at this guy, sacrificing himself for us. See, he's not, he's not worried about himself. He's not getting an extra bit of food rations to join civil protection. He's staying strong for his brothers and sisters. You know, the humanity trying to keep things going. Oh, crap. I went the wrong way. Ah. Just like them, you know, that, that, that lady back there saying... You know, everybody run, and she tried to hold. You know, stay in the doorway. People like that have sacrificed themselves, so that, you know, throughout time, to help uh, the. You know, you could call it the the good people. See me? Oh, there they see me. Oof. <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah, pair yourself. Alex Vance. <laughs> Doctor Freeman, I presume. <laughs> We better hurry. The combine can be slow to wake, but once they're up, you don't want to get in their way. Look at her, she laid them all out. One. Oh. I don't think it occurred to him that you might not have a map. One, two, three, four, five, six. She put down six of these. Wait, is that an extra one? No, six. She put down six of them, man. Don't mess with Alex over here. I'm Alex Vance. My father worked with you back in Black Mesa. I'm sure you don't remember me, though. I don't know if you can see it, but she has a special a few pistol. Words, aren't you? She has a special pistol that you don't get during the game. It's a it's a three shot burst pistol. You can get it through console. Remember commands. him from Black Mesa? Your old administrator. <laughs> don't get my dad started on Doctor Breen. Through here. Ah. We used to get uh, working salvage. You get a lot of these in old uh, 55 gallon drums. It, we used to get a ton of metal in, but mo for the most part, people have switched to a lot of plastic. So, uh, you know, we don't get them in as often. You get a lot of pallets in. Come on, Gordon. Popping my knuckles, sorry. Hmm. 
Funny you showing up on this day in particular. A red letter day. We've been helping people escape the city on foot. It's a dangerous route to my father's lab through the old canals. Today, we're finally on the verge of having a better way. <laughs> Here, let me buy you a drink. Oh, and by the way, nice to finally meet you. <laughs> uh, and uh, the reason, you know, we haven't changed much as... Gordon Freeman is you'll see when I you know if I do a playthrough of the first Half-Life we were th well, that G-Man dude stuck us in stasis so that's why we haven't aged because <clears throat> we've been stuck in uh... <laughs> you can, if we talked about uh, quantum physics yeah you, you can understand what uh, we were stuck in but uh, basically stuck in you know this pause mode been. Like I said, stasis. But th this is where the first uh, stuff is going to end. I'm, I'm going to stop right here. <clears throat> and I'm going to play some more, uh, you know, tomorrow or so. And uh, hopefully you've enjoyed it up until now. And uh, take care, be safe, and be cool to each other. Thanks for watching, and remember to join me in the next video. And as always, take care, be safe, and be cool to each other.